we committed <laughs> grand theft auto. Yes. And we succeeded. Do you think we're going to get in trouble for that, though? Is I don't the question. know, because who was that that was following us? I don't know. <laughs> we're going to have to find out. I am DR Kilpatrick, and this is DR from Detroit, the after show. And I am joined today by my girl, Claudia Logan, and she is back on the couch with me as we dive into all things episode three. Episode three was simply iconic. It is. Like, that's the word. Simply, we just took Felicia Rashad, flipped her on her head. Turned her upside down. Turned her upside down. Had her shaking down. her booty. We didn't, well, she described shaking yeah, her booty. Shaking her booty, you know what I'm saying? But we gave her a gun. I got a gun pulled out on me by Felicia Rashad. You like, did. I thought I could be done with the world at right. that point. You I was like, now. that's it, that's put it, it on my tombstone. It's that's not it. gonna get better. <laughs> It doesn't get better. Okay. So, in this episode, Diara and Moni set out to investigate Deontay's mother. Yeah. But we end up getting way more than we bargained for when she takes us along on this crazy joyride. The <laughs> joyride, that abandoned van that looks so sketchy already. It was just Very insanely kidnapper. sketchy. Very child molester van. And it's like, as a black woman, will we really do that? It's giving no. <laughs> it's giving, it's giving, this is an adventure. Before we dive in too deep, Oof. what was your favorite scene in this episode? I loved the balance of us getting to know Aja. I think she represents the Detroit woman in a way. Mm. Uh, one of the Detroit women in a mm. way. So let's just get into the fashion of Aja because that's why mm. I had to come correct today. I was <laughs> like, she she really mercs with that pink dress and that pink fur when her and T are like trying to set something up. And it's very Detroit. We love a monochromatic look. What was your favorite scene? The scene where we're parked in the van with her and we're just waiting. Oh. And at first she's super intimidating and during this scene, she kind of softens up and starts telling a crazy story about yes. who she may or may not have had relations with in the past. But she also said she was friends with all of them and that's why it kind of tickled her to mm. actually say that. But she was like, I was friends with all of them and I did ask her because I ask inappropriate questions. That's sort of my toxic trait. Yes. I was like, did you sleep with any of them? And she was like, no. Oh, that's such a Felicia way of <laughs> saying like, yes. No. <laughs> you know, and, and as my mother always said, class always wins. So yes. I don't think she would tell me even if she had. Let's jump into the Let's breakdown of this it. episode. Yes. So for me, a lot of this episode is really rooted in the deep friendship between Diara and Moni. Yeah. And even though they don't step to each other like that when they first are reacquainted in the pilot, <laughs> In this episode, you start to see that their friendship has some kind of deep roots. Yeah. You know, I ain't gonna lie, this episode after watching it made me cry. Really? I was like... At the end or what the, part? I think just seeing those layers peel back as we're, you know, with Vonda in the mm -hmm. van and stuff like that. And like, it's small talk, but it's so loaded. And seeing those layers kind of peel back for DR and Moni and then just seeing some type of joy happening in between the two of taking them back to something that they once knew mm -hmm. was just so, it felt like a win at the end of the episode. It's like, no, we still know that part of each other. That shared history. Yeah. It's like, there is nothing better Sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Then having shared history with somebody is so intimate. Yeah. And, you know, the episode is called The One the one That Got Away. Mm. And, of course, Chris got away. Right. Also, the Impala got away. Yeah. But also, the question is, is there a friendship mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. that gets away? And a lot of times we grieve mm. relationships. Yeah. There's, like, how many love songs about grieving relationships, yeah. you know, romantic relationships. But platonic friendships sometimes run their course or change as yes. we grow into adulthood and we don't necessarily talk about how hard that is yeah. as adults. So it, they get an opportunity to sort of yeah. jump in and fix, but it's clear that something ain't right. Like, it's not all love. It's not all love, yeah. but I feel like that's family, though. Like, mm. in ways or, or deep relationships of love that could seem, you know, very or be very close to being unconditional. Mm -hmm. like, there was something my friend always said, like, you know, if y'all don't fight, y'all not real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's now that I'm older, I kind of mm -hmm. get what that means because then we're not being honest. Then we're not being, you know, truthful about how we feel, how we change and how we want the, the other partner to change or the other friend. Sometimes that's where love languages come in. Yep. Because sometimes people are fighting, but they're trying to love you yeah. and people don't necessarily get that. Yeah. Sometimes people are like looking for connection and they just end up bickering. Yeah. So and that's really yeah. interesting. When we think of the love language, we always just think of something that's romantic and, yeah. and those types. You know, there are some friends I feel like, you know, that be like, 
I kind of want to hear from you more often or I like to be checked in with more often. Mm. My love language is like, you don't have to buy me a gift just to say that you miss me. Just call me or something like that. That yeah. isn't really discussed in those friendships. So I feel like that's where um, those day ones kind of drift apart. But I'm very lucky to feel like I have a few of those day ones yes. too. Evolution happens and it isn't successful in a partnership if the, the individual isn't evolving themselves. Yeah. Not just for the relationship, but for themselves. Yeah. But there's also a downside, like you said, sometimes because you want to have a reconnection with folk and it's like, have you regretted it? Like, have you ever tried Ooh. to, me and Mo Moni or Diara or something like that, and then you just regret it. You won't regret it with Moni because she's that <laughs> girl, but. <laughs> well. I love my day ones. My best friend is my best friend since I'm two. Mm. And I do have those friends that are fam like they've reached a point of like, you can make me so mad, but it doesn't matter. I sort of love you unconditionally. Yeah. But I did have a situation where I thought I was done with somebody and I was like, that's it. That's I'm done. And she was really vulnerable and was like, I'm sorry. Mm. I love you. And I'm not going anywhere. And it kind of took me off, it took me off balance because I feel like I get that honest. My dad is like that. He'll cut somebody off. He'll be like, but they're dying. Do you want to maybe go by the hospital? He'd be like, they should have done what they done. You know what I mean? You're like, sir. And I don't want to be that way. And so I was really deeply grateful that she did this as a childhood friend. Mm -hmm. And we resumed our friendship and it's been beautiful and fantastic and nothing but love ever since. So yeah. no, I have not regretted ever reviving a friendship. I feel like some friend relationships really hurt more than the re a romantic relationship. Yeah. Like in that van, I'm so butthurt about you. And I'm like, I'm over here fighting with you like you my, <laughs> like you my man. And I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. I said, Moni, come on, get it together. Yeah, we sort of feel like romantic relationships could come and go. Mm. But those female friendships, we feel like they're supposed to be forever. Yeah. Oh, so beyond the friendship element of the episode, we also get into something huge. Trauma. Baby. Healing the trauma. That was such a natural segue. Yeah, it was. It was. So danger helps Diara heal mm -hmm. from this trauma. And we talked about this in the writer's room. We were like, can we have her watch somebody get shot in episode two? This is a regular person. This is not a detective by yeah. trade. Like, is she just gonna, as the rest of the episode, just her laying on the couch, unable to move because right. that's traumatizing. Yes, it is. But we decided that she needed somebody to make that okay for her and to walk her through some kind of healing process. And of course, Danger seemed like the perfect person to do that. So you're saying there's some kind of merit badge for seeing some shit? Uh, not just seeing it, surviving. Last one I got was when my ex-wife tried to strangle me with a phone charger. Interesting. Thematically, this relates to Vonda who's also trying to heal from yeah. an ancient trauma yeah. of losing her son. And so she's trying to heal her trauma by helping other people. Let's talk about what trauma looks like in our community and in our mm -hmm. culture. Trauma And how we've been taught to move through hard things. For example, with danger, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's so interesting and so, so smart um, that danger, who is the one that is kind of more so Hood. The hood dude. Yeah. Or like the guy who is dangerous in the community. Like he, you know, he robbed the crib, you know? But he is also like taking you through something that could possibly be good for your well being. Mm -hmm. I think that it could be possibly because he's seen so much. Mm -hmm. In our community, it's really, really hard to to identify when we're traumatized. Mm -hmm. So that's when we just, you know, kind of go with what is gonna help us get over it rather than get through it. Yes. I love that. And what helps there. us get over it? The sex, the yep. drinking, yep. the whatever. The anything, any yeah. type of vice. You know, sometimes you need professional help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you upside <laughs> your head, it's crazy. I think it's a beautiful thing that danger is in therapy. Um, I borrowed that from my real life because mm. like you said, I was like, oh, this could be the most stereotypical type character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I wanted to give him traits that were very specific to me mm. to make sure the character felt multidimensional. Yes. He's um, he's a meditator. He went to the YouTube University of Spirituality. Okay. Like I have been. Um, I have three degrees. 
<laughs> okay, come on, doctorate. <laughs> you know, he's into the guided meditations. Yes. And that's how he that's how he moves through a lot of stuff. What I really liked is when he took you through it, when it all just looped back around to that car with our um, younger selves in it. Yes. I was like, oh, she thinks this is a happy moment. Yes. Yeah. I just really love that. Yeah, that was her, that was her, um, her safe place, mm -hmm. the car. Mm -hmm. So we've covered so much already, but I cannot leave y'all hanging without talking about my favorite line from the episode, mm -hmm. which comes during the scene where Diara's crying in the shower. <laughs> and she says, being a black woman is so difficult that you can't even take a trauma shower without worrying about getting your hair wet. So true. And that was kind of a joke, like an offhanded joke I made in the writer's room. And everybody was like, no, you really have to put that in there. And that is just the thing of like, it is much more difficult for black women to do pretty much every doggone thing. So, Claudia, are we completely letting Vonda off the hook? Like, do we believe her? Do we feel like she couldn't have she couldn't have been involved? I don't think I would let her off the hook, but I definitely can humanize her a bit more. Mm. I, I, she's not some scary figure that was talked about for over 20 years mm -hmm. of, you know, doing this terrible thing and finding out us finding out what she actually does as a yeah. kind of vigilante in a way. At the very least, there's no way this woman kidnapped her son or sold him into a terrible organization or any of that. Do we know where we're going from here? Because we've we've kind of eliminated Vonda as being our prime suspect, yeah. basically. Yeah. So we have the box. And where do you think we're going from here? I think we're going down a deeper rabbit hole, but we're on that adrenaline of stealing yeah. a car, committing so many crimes in one night. I just think that I'm along for the ride, just like everybody else. All right, y'all, we have done it again. We have dissected this episode within an inch of its life, giving you all the tools you need to go back in and watch episode four. And then we'll see you back here on The After Show.